February is Black History Month. This month-long observance is a chance to celebrate the achievements and contributions of African Americans. Each day in February, DNN will highlight a different individual or contribution from the African American community. Today, our featured individual is Daisy Gatson Bates. When the Little Rock Nine walked into Central High School in 1957, the entire country was watching. Many saw a mob of jeering white students surrounding a lone black girl whose eyes were shielded by sunglasses. A photo of that moment became one of the most iconic images of the Civil Rights Movement. What Americans didn't see, though, was the woman who organized those black students, Daisy Gatson Bates. Then, the president of Arkansas NAACP, Bates planned the strategy for desegregation in the state. She selected the nine students, driving them to the school and protecting them from crowds. After President Eisenhower intervened, the students were allowed to enroll, a major victory for desegregation efforts across the South. And that's only part of Bates' legacy. She was born in a tiny town in southern Arkansas. Her childhood was marred by tragedy when her mother was murdered by three white men. Her father later abandoned her, leaving young Daisy to be raised by family friends. As an adult, Bates moved with her husband to Little Rock, where they founded their own newspaper, the Arkansas State Press, which covered the civil rights movement. She eventually helped plan the NAACP's strategy for desegregating schools, leading to her involvement with the Little Rock Nine. In 1960s, Bates moved to Washington, D.C., where she worked for the Democratic National Committee and for anti-poverty projects in President Lyndon B. Johnson's administration. Her memory lives on with Daisy Gatson Bates Day, a state holiday celebrated in Arkansas each February. Good morning, Marathon. It's Tuesday, February 8th, 2022. Happy Severe Weather Awareness Week. I'm Cami, And I'm Elise. And you're watching DNN. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now back to you. Please be seated. Attention middle school students, this Thursday there is a Valentine's dance from 6 to 9 p.m. in the cafeteria. Tickets are $10 in advance or $15 at the door. Snacks and drinks will be provided. Dress semi-casual. If you plan to bring a date who does not attend Marathon Middle, see Ms. Silvera ASAP for your paperwork. It's due tomorrow. Zeke Club is holding a makeup drive for a domestic abuse shelter. Bring in new and opened makeup items for women in need. You can place the items in the bin located throughout the school. If you cannot locate the drop-off bin, you can bring them to Ms. McKechnie in 2201. Attention seniors. There are still a few pages available for the senior ads in the back of the yearbook. Go to yearbookordercenter.com to get yours before they're all gone. Seniors who wish to include a baby picture in the yearbook should get them to Miss McDonald on 7307. They are past due. That's all the news we have for you today, Finns. I'm Elise. And I'm Cammie. And you've been watching DNN. This week is Severe Weather Awareness Week, where every day you will hear about another weather hazard and useful information about it. Today we are talking about marine hazards and rip currents. With well over 2,000 miles of coastline, marine hazards are an everyday threat in Florida. Large waves, thunderstorm winds, lightning, water spouts, and rip currents are just some of the hazards that can impact marine conditions across Florida's waterways. A rip current is a strong channel of water moving away from the shore. Rip currents typically form along the beach at breaks in the offshore underwater sandbar, but they can also form near structures such as jetties and piers. Rip currents are a common part of the natural nearshore ocean circulation and occur at many Florida beaches every day. Surprisingly, rip currents kill more people in Florida during an average year than hurricanes, tornadoes, and lightning combined. For more information on rip currents, marine, and other hazards, go to floridadisaster.org. Have a great day, Fence.